course is the course name is a decoding devops uh, my name is imran i'm going to give you the demo for this uh, before we get started with that uh, kindly please mute everyone okay so uh, whatever questions you have you can ask me at the end of the session um, i'll give you enough time ample amount of time and we'll give of course all your answers uh, most of your questions hopefully will get answered in the demo itself right so in today's time uh, if you want to become a devops engineer there are really so many things you can choose from like there are so many tools there are so many courses right there's this jenkins there's ansible there's gate there's kubernetes then there is you know uh, devops for managers there's uh, principles for devops just really so many things which is really really confusing uh, day by day it's getting more and more confusing uh, i kind of try uh, to place a project uh, a, a course for you with some projects that will give you hands on almost all the popular tools today in the market and will also give you some projects right so my name is Imran again uh, I have 11 years of experience um, I started doing DevOps uh, cloud computing I started doing in uh, 2011 like that and in one or two years I started doing DevOps uh, and yes there was DevOps this DevOps from more than 11 years actually uh, but people get to know it very late so I have a lot of creative ideas that I uh, implement in uh, projects uh, as a consultant and I would like to share those ideas in the course. I am certified in various areas in DevOps and cloud computing. In Red Hat, I'm certified in Ansible, OpenStack, Gluster, Kubernetes, OpenShift, Puppet, uh, and I'm a Red Hat architect. In AWS side, I'm certified in SysOps, DevOps professional, security specialty. And if you have any question related to certification, which certification is right or wrong, you can ask me at the end of the demo. I'll help you on that. At distance past, I did so many other certification and I do a lot of certification because I am a trainer and a consultant. So I need to present myself. And if you have any question again, you can let me know. I will help you in choosing the right certification. So I work in these four areas mainly. DevOps, cloud computing, collaborating with multiple teams developers testers operations everyone security and i do a lot of scripting right uh, so enough of bragging about myself i am very very passionate when it comes to devops cloud computing and training and sharing that knowledge and that you will see in the course okay so why you should learn devops there are so many reasons and you must have your own reason but i'll give you three good reasons why you should be learning devops okay of course money is involved in that okay so uh, devops is one of the top skills and i think it has just started you know uh, devops started growing in past two years it is growing a lot uh, i have seen a very slow uh, development in devops in you know 2013 14 15 16 then in from 17 onwards started picking up last two years was tremendous growth and i think it has just started now okay so this is one of the top skills that people are looking you can check business insider forbes right so if you're doing some if you're doing devops you will be recognized of course it's also one of the highly paid job as per the survey and you can check that on indeed glassdoor payscale you can post a question on quora i have seen uh, so many devops engineers getting highly you know, pay, you know getting paid more than developers and testers okay really a star candidates now why people are ready to pay that much to devops what's so special about a devops engineer or an architect or a consultant and what's so special well first thing is supply demand uh, concept right pure economics uh, there's a lot of demands of DevOps, but it's not enough supply. I would say there's not enough supply of good DevOps engineers out there, right? And all the companies wants to use DevOps to deliver their software quickly and efficiently. The third is the most important reason and drives everything actually. From a long time, IT industry is divided in two categories, development and operations. Okay, development, you have developers, builders, testers, and these people will create the software and test the software and operations team will deliver that software and from a long time there's a huge gap in between these two parties i have worked in both areas so i know the real pain points uh, and devops you know bridges this gap 
and helps you deliver the software as quickly as you are developing it. Any new feature can be quickly delivered to the end user. Okay, and we'll see how that works, right? But that's what DevOps main objective is. DevOps is all about delivering software and its features quickly and efficiently. Think of logistics, right? A logistics for a company, which helps it transport its good goods to uh, you know, around the country or internationally, right? Like that, the DevOps is logistics in the IT industry for the softwares. Yes, so everybody who is into IT industry, everybody who is into developing or giving the service would like to implement DevOps so they can grow in their business quickly. And that's why there's a huge demand of DevOps. And that's why there are everybody, there are a lot of people who are ready to pay money, a lot of money, right? And yes, money is involved. Always it's involved, right? Yeah, so those are good three good reasons right uh, everyone really needs devops any it industry you go today they will either either in the process they have already implemented or they're looking to implement devops right so there are so many courses in the market guys if you want to know why me well i do devops every day there'll be other people also will be doing every day but i have also trained thousands of people in devops prior to that i have trained people in virtualization cloud computing linux scripting right i also we also have a youtube channel and we have also recently released uh, project videos on devops okay i'll be focusing on the real time implementation uh, there are so many uh, concepts and tools that you can use uh, to just run a hello world program uh, that you see in most of the places but i will show you how you can really implement it in your project right the skills that you're going to learn and while you're learning you can start implementing in your project and you see the difference right there's so many people who actually you know while they're learning they're implementing also and going for interviews also but i recommend you do it later so i will teach you on how to excel in software delivery it's all about delivering the software quickly and efficiently so i'll show you how the you know, big big companies are you know um, using techniques and technologies to deliver softwares right i'll show you how different technologies work together that will be one of the main area where i expertise there are so many tools you have jenkins ansible cloud formation you have terraform right so many so many tools today uh, you really uh, i will show you how all these tools can be connected together or what really the tools that you need and how to connect them together right how to solve that puzzle that's where most of the people are failing. I have created a lot of practical scenarios, exercises, projects, documentation. I have written a book also, Decoding DevOps, which you will get. Interview questions we have, resumes we have, really a lot of material we have, uh, you know, enough, uh, more than enough in your plate to eat. Okay. And you will be getting that. We'll have a Google Classroom uh, where I'll be sharing all the things with you. And I'm really, really very passionate about training. I'm actually making, uh, you know, we are actually making good business also. Uh, we have recently released two new products, which I'll show you. All right, now let's get into what exactly is DevOps, right? Like what, if you have any question guys, while I'm explaining these things, write it down or maybe put it in the chat. I will, you know, answer those questions, okay? Right, so what really is DevOps? There's so much of confusion in the market till today. That's because there is not a specific industry that is defining the DevOps, right? What is the right tool or what are the principles? Okay, it's a general idea. So some say it's about scripting. It's about automation, right? Well, it's not just about automation because if it's that, you know, I've been doing it from the beginning of my career or before that also, right? So, then it could be about cloud computing. Some people say I'm using, you know, cloud computing, <clears throat> Azure DevOps, AWS DevOps, or maybe this is just using cloud computing and they say they're, they're doing DevOps, right? Uh, it's not like that. And we'll get to know how and why. Uh, DevOps is about culture. Yeah, partially it's true. But then if that is true, then why are we learning so many tools? This is a totally hands-on course, okay? Complete hands-on. So if it's just about culture, it'll be just learning principles and management and stuff, right? And then it could be about tools. People say, you know, it's if I'm using Jansible or if I'm using Jenkins, we are doing DevOps. Well, there are pretty much so many tools and this culture. So really, these are different, different areas from people are talking about. 
let's understand what is devops okay and before that i'm going to set a scene and i'll go with the story everyone likes a good story right so we'll understand the software life cycle first uh, how the product gets developed how it gets delivered what are the problem and how devops solves that problem okay i also have an animated video for this one the slides are from this animated video i'll share the link with you so anything uh, you have uh, to begin with you have uh, an idea right facebook was an idea google was an idea twitter was an idea right so assume imagine that you have an idea okay like terry terry has an idea okay or you can name her anything whatever you want right she is uh, she has an idea just a moment yeah sorry so uh, she is um, an artistic person okay not really into it uh, she is creating art pieces i will also sell art pieces through her exhibition right she wants to expand her business right she wants to go nationally or internationally she's confident enough so she thinks of you know it's a mobile world smartphone world why not develop an app and sell my product from the app right it's a great idea okay she can go with that Right, so through the mobile app, she can make more business. She can expand her business, okay? Maybe open franchisee, whatever, right? But she does not have a mobile app development team. She has no idea of people who are, will be involved, like developers, testers, sysadmin, cloud computing, security, right? There'll be so many people who are involved in developing an app and also delivering it, okay? To, you know, the user really actually downloads that app and start using it, support, all those things right she has no idea about it so one way she can have her own company or she can approach a software consulting firm so she goes to a software consulting firm and explains her idea about the mobile app right software consulting firm this one is specialized in developing and delivering the software to the user so let's understand some concepts in this story before we begin to continue the story a software development process is a very well defined and organized process right it's not like you get the requirements start developing and start downloading right it's a, a properly organized process if you're a developer you would already know about this the first step is requirement gathering right product features uh, you will be the user target user usage system requirements right all these things will be gathered that will be the first step requirement gathering it's a very important step even for us being a devops okay second step is about planning on those requirement right uh, what will be the cost how many resources will need what are the risk associated with it the planning will be done third phase will be design where the architects like the software architects or network architects or system admin or you know, operations architect will design okay here we're talking about uh, the software architects they're going to design based on the planning right and they will produce nice design documents and basically they'll give a roadmap or a path for the developers to develop the product right in stage four the development will start the actually the code will start getting you know written right they'll write thousands and thousands of lines of code to create the product once the product is ready or part of it is ready product will be tested by the software testing team or qa team quality assurance team they will identify for any defects you know this is good before or very important before it goes production and user reports a problem before that it has to be test tested so software testers are going to conduct those testing if everything is approved then it is deployed to the real servers or cloud computing or virtualization wherever the deployment is okay so system admins or the operations teams you know gets you know involved into this they'll deliver or deploy the software to the servers from where the users will be using it and then there will be also regular operations and maintenance right regular maintenance the final thing you know any use new user requirement or any bug or any anything that needs to be patched any security vulnerability such kind of things right comes in the maintenance so maintenance is a place where you know is a phase where there will be changes and also the ops team has to maintain the uptime okay 24 by 7 up with a good performance right 
All right, let's understand this in a cyclic view. So you have requirement gathering first, planning, designing, architects are going to design, developers are going to develop the product, testers are going to test the product, operations team is going to deploy and maintain the product. Okay, it's a cyclic process. This is called as SDLC, Software Development Life Cycle. Yeah, SDLC is a short form of Software Development Life Cycle. Right? I know I'm going old school, uh, but you know, I'll get to the point. Don't worry. Okay, it's very important to set this ground. There are different models in SDLC, like you have Waterfall, Agile, Spiral, Big Bang, and there are a few other. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to compare uh, between waterfall and agile and I will show you how agile is the mother of DevOps Okay So um, This models think of these models as different roadways Okay or path to reach a destination right you want to go somewhere you are driving and there are multiple roads to reach there So you will choose a road based on various factors like cost time risk Right? Based on these factors, a particular uh, route will be chosen. Same way, a particular model will be chosen in SDLC based on various factors. Waterfall model. Waterfall model, everything works in phases. Okay, this is traditional model, not so much used now. And I'm going to uh, talk about disadvantages of this one. Okay, sure, there are advantages also, but you know, uh, our benefit lies in disadvantages of this. Okay, so here I go. Uh, first phase is requirement gathering. Okay, when this phase completes, then the next phase starts, which is designing, right? And that's why it's called as waterfall. When this is full, this goes to the next level. When the designing is completed, then it goes to the next phase, which is implementation, right? Developers writing code and building, right? Once everything is completed, all of the code is written, then it goes to the testing phase. Testers is going to test the entire product, everything of it. Okay. Now you see, I'm stressing on everything, all, everyone like that. Okay. Focus. Once the testing is completed, everything is tested. If everything checks out fine, it goes to the maintenance where it will be deployed and it will be regularly maintained. Right. Okay. So in waterfall model, oops, sorry. In waterfall model, everything works in a phase. Just one phase complete, then it only goes to the next phase and it will take months to give a working product. Okay. If there is a changing requirement, it cannot accommodate that. Right. And today's time is when we want regular changes. Market changes so quickly and so rapidly. Right. It will be difficult for us to use this model because we cannot accommodate regular changes. Right. It may take months. To deliver the product in those months the idea may have been gone old also right so we need updates there's no way to do that okay so this is slow and not so much apt okay let's check with uh, terry's okay uh terry's idea right so she's not sure about all the requirements right she would like to observe the product development and alter new ideas and new requirements right uh based on you know uh, what she sees so she want to give feedbacks regular feedbacks right and based on our feedbacks things should be changed but definitely you can't use waterfall model and that's like everyone's story today right it's a mobile smartphone world a lot of apps it's the same story most of the places okay i'm focusing mostly on the idea okay here so waterfall is a no-go right so uh, the the team the development team or the head of the development team decides to not use waterfall and instead of developing everything at once how about we divide it into small iterations right like a two to four week of cycle where we'll be developing some features and we'll showing it to terry okay once she once she approves or gives feedback that can be changed into the next iteration okay so two to four weeks next iteration next iteration right so in iterative way we are also demonstrating it to the customer getting the feedback right well this is called as agile agile as dlc okay compared to waterfall agile the, the word agile itself means quick okay an iteration could be two to four weeks so in every two to four week of iteration which is also called as sprint 
in scrum framework sprint so in every sprint there will be requirement gaps of oh, sorry so there will be required be requirement will be already gathered right there'll be designing there'll be developing testing deploy and maintain okay so things are divided now right and we give the demonstration we get the feedback and if order feedback can be implemented in the next iteration okay this sounds pretty awesome right uh, totally suits today's time apt okay let's understand a few more things what happens when the software is getting developed when developers are writing the softwares are creating or writing the code they're going to build the code okay the build is going to generate something called as artifact you'll understand that later think of the build is generating a software okay or a part of a software and developer are going to test it into their local environment first in their systems or they may have some local testing ground once they approve out of many many build they approve that okay this is good to go okay then they'll promote it then it will be deployed to staging environment by build and release team and some testing will be performed by the software testers right and in the staging environment uh, if something goes wrong it is reverted back if it goes fine then it will be deployed to production environment okay so that's a normal build and deploy at a very very high level a build and deploy process okay there are many many things over here but i'm just showing you a very high level view okay <clears throat> even though doing that there's so many times your software testers are trying to test the product they're not able to access or test cases fails okay for xyz reason right and when this happens the operations team who was in charge of doing the deployment will be called okay and will be you know asked to fix it right so every time there is a failure the operation need, operation team most of the time needs to come in okay and this is i'm talking before the production release okay so why that it worked in the development environment the things are not working in production environment okay the production deployment issues that come even if you fix all those things some there's so many times that issues comes in the production deployment okay and that is because now you know understanding this problem is very very important now focus now operation team is going to deploy the product or its features based on whatever was working in the development environment okay assuming that it will work in the production environment but it fails the reason mostly is the two environments are not periodically synced they are not synchronized production environment will have uh, different data better network more security and different designs than the development environment which maybe have a single systems or just few systems or data is also old so the environments are not synced so there is not a guarantee that what's working in dev and test environment is going to work in production also the new development and processes are making the development very fast the development has become very fast now but operation team is not able to cope up with this frequent changes because of agile this regular builds are coming out an operation team is not able to cope up with this okay that also leads to a lot of failures production server as i told you will be different and may need some tweaking at the firewall level at a database level at a network level or at a os level okay maybe the versions are not in sync okay and there are really not clear instruction when the operations team is deploying to production they're not clear instructions from the developer okay you need to change some firewall rules or database okay or maybe some other things okay and ops team have to figure out based on their own experience with the project with the product right it's basically communication gap operations team so developers are not able to properly communicate with the operations and the vice versa you have to understand in an agile process in an agile sdlc there will be regular code changes there will be regular deployments and there will be regular testing because of the new deployments right an operations team will not be able to cope up with that many deployments sorry yeah right so even agile agile has made development very fast and quick but the operations team is still waterfall operations team has to maintain the regular uh, deployment they have to maintain the uptime okay they are itil process driven right they are like government office everything gets approved so many at so many levels then only changes can be made at the production and that slows the deployment and with that they'll get regular deployment request there'll be not clear instruction they'll be already occupied with 
their production up time so you can't blame everything on operations team they're already doing uh, much much important work maintaining production systems but in all this customer is suffering okay the uh, the project managers are passing the deadlines okay you know they are not able to you know meet the deadline right because of these failures the failures needs to be fixed before before it's demonstrated or it is released for production right and this leads to development versus operations fight before the devops came in it was always developer versus operations okay it's the tom and jerry fight where uh, you know always fights but cannot live with each other without each other or with each other also okay uh, that's because guys the agile is uh, sorry the development is agile driven operations is itl driven okay agile regular and quick changes it uh, sorry operations is itl driven stability okay step by step organized it documented right so they are really poles apart so mostly these this these are the words that is used by operations team that the developer has just tossed their code over the wall okay so no clear instruction just toss their work and you know operations team has to deal with it then for the deployment right developers will always complain that deployment is taking very long time and operations will always complain about getting the half baked code okay no clear instructions in all this again let me remind you the customer is suffering and that impact the business there's a direct business loss if the customer is not happy okay and this is because the development versus operations fight right there was a guy called as patrick de bois in 2008 or 9 there was an agile conference where he delivered a seminar of uh, what is devops and how do you know that, that is the first time when the devops was really used agile came in okay it was taking the it industry by a storm but operations team was struggling a lot because of that so he being worked in different both the environments understood the pain point and he said there is a need of integrating development and operations team together okay he said the developers are agile but the operation is still waterfall okay and that is true till today so many industry so many companies have same story till today okay it's more than a decade this happened okay the devops world started and flickr was the first company who actually did devops first time and they have also showcased that into a conference 10 plus deploys per day by using devops that was the title you can search for it okay you will find it on the internet that was a huge thing actually you know 10 plus deployments per day okay where you know one changes in the production used to take minimum five days you know i i know because i used to do that right so enter the devops right to fix this problem after that people started adopting devops after flickr actually so what really is devops or who is a devops consultant what he or she can do a devops consultant will not suddenly do something magical that will skyrocket your business the first responsibility of a devops consultant is to bring all the parties together and explain that this is going to be a process of communication collaboration and integration all the parties instead of working in their silos needs to work together communicate effectively collaborate very well and integrate all the tools and technologies so you as fast you can deliver de sorry as fast as you can develop the software you can also deliver it okay and these are not just words guys when people say devops is a culture that's true okay it's a philosophy right and it starts with communication right whenever there is a fight between two parties right uh, to resolve that the first step is to communicate right collaboratively work together and integrate everything to resolve that differences right and that's the same thing when it uh, comes to devops devops consultant explains the development team that you have to understand operations they deal with stability okay so he and uh, you know the the developers needs to understand the ops part okay operations part and operations teams also needs to understand the development it's the time where you need to be agile agility is very important okay uh, the old itl process driven approach is not going to work out it's not going to cut it right 
So both parties needs to understand with each other and work collaboratively. And the most important thing, everything needs to be automated. Okay, everything that is done from the development till the delivery of the production needs to be automated. You know, when I was uh, working in a company in 2013, there was a big movement started there. Automate, automate, automate everything, automate everything. Okay, and there was trainings, and you know there was you know sessions and uh, seminars, and you know it was just everybody was going crazy about automation. You know, I was also really was yeah. I mean, I was already doing some automation by the time. Uh, I was getting happy with this, but I was really wondering what's happening. Why everyone, right? I was thinking that's just system admins or systems engineer, but then you know everything testers, everything, right? Okay, guys, please do not put your mail IDs and phone numbers in the public chat. Put it in the private chat. Organizers, okay, send it to organizer. All right. So automating everything and so many things. There's a code build process. There is code testing process. There's a software testing. Any infrastructure level change, right? At the operating system or network storage infrastructure change. Automate deployment process. Automate everything or anything. Is not come properly yeah there everything should be automated okay i have an animated uh video on this one okay i'll just send you the link you can watch it again so both the parties development and operation will be working together okay the wall has to be brought down like the berlin wall was brought down like that okay and then the entire team will be working together okay uh sorry not this these are the avengers yeah this is our team okay the build and release team the developers the testers the system admin the database admin and any other party whatever is involved into or whosoever is involved into development and delivery needs to be working together okay automate each and everything right and once everything is automated then comes the integration or not once everything is automated sorry my bad uh, as soon as you know you start doing some automation you start integrating okay you do automate something integrate automate integrate automate integrate it's going to be like that guys okay and that's what is important people say automation your devops no no not at all automation is just automation automating steps integration the complete orchestration which i'm going to show you now the devops life cycle okay this should be your objective being a devops Okay, if you are able to do this, then you call yourself DevOps. All right. Otherwise, you're just doing an automation. A DevOps life cycle will be created by working together with every team. What will be your job? You're going to automate as much as possible. You're going to help other team automate things. And your most important job is integrating all the automation framework together. Okay, collaboratively. So you're going to be the bridge, the gap. You're going to fill that gap. Okay. So DevOps lifecycle, the first thing is the code that the developers create. When the code is created, automatically the code should be built. Okay, we'll see what are the tools that are used. Code build process should be automated. It generates the software. Then code testing and code analysis has to be also automated. After that, the delivery comes. So deploying it to the servers, to the staging servers, so any server related change any database change any security change those things also needs to be automated okay software testing needs to be automated Thus, there are automation software testers they should be in there in devops okay manual testers are history now okay and software testing once it's automated it's get integrated and you know uh, then you can deploy automatically to production environment okay it's go live you're going to redirect the traffic to a real user to the new deployment right if everything is good this continues or else there will be a rollback automation okay rolling back everything automatically right but the user approval is there you're getting good fit good feedback regular monitoring will be done by the monitoring team this is the complete devops life cycle code code build code test code analysis delivery this is where there's a lot of automation guys okay which will be done by you mostly uh, any db uh, changes any security level changes software testing deployment to production go live all this and everything is automated and integrated together 
it has to be a life cycle like you have waterfall life cycle you have agile life cycle we have devops life cycle okay and you must have seen this diagram right zoom zap zoop Okay, it's a continuous process. This diagram is because of it's an infinite loop, right? It's a continuous process. Your DevOps lifecycle is a continuous process, right? Because there will be regular code changes and the entire story happens again and again. Okay, so this one more picture of DevOps lifecycle, which is very popular. I have thrown some tools over here. This is not my diagram, uh, but I have put some tools over here. So, you know, uh, you can relate it with the tools. Like when the developer writes a code, they'll push the code to a version control system like Git. Okay, uh, once the code is changed, there'll be some automation tool like Jenkins, which can fetch the code, run some unit test and some other kinds of test, build the software by using build tool like Maven, which is for Java or even building Docker images here. Then storing the software or we call it as artifact at this place, storing the artifact into a repository. Okay, so this process from push code to store artifact, if this is automated, this is called as continuous integration. Okay, after that comes to delivering, right? The software is stored in a repository, then there will be some automation tool that will make changes into the infrastructure, like probably AWS you're using, right? And deploying the softwares by using tools like Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Scripts, whatever, okay, any automation tool. And then running uh, the load or functional tests now the software testers would have written some automation test scripts executing those things okay and this happens for dev qa staging and then production environment right if it's till the staging environment right from push code till the staging environment this is called as continuous delivery if the automation is there right as soon as the developer makes code change everything automatically gets delivered to staging this is called as continuous delivery if also it is automatically getting delivered to production then that is continuous deployment okay you learn those things right in old times we used to call it as one click deployment you know and the developer makes a code change and boom that goes to production systems everything in the middle is automated so no ticketing systems uh, you know assigning it to the operations team can you make this change can you make that change and software testing huh? things are automated right uh, there's not a great definition on devops but this is the one that i liked personally devops is the philosophy of unifying development and operations team at culture practice and tools level okay if you need a definition but really you don't need a definition you need an objective objective is excelling in software delivery okay that's the objective that happens when you're communicating collaboratively working together and integrating all the tools and technologies so everything you automate this life cycle is only possible if you're integrating all the tools and technologies together developers tools system admin tools software testers tools security tools every tools together all right so these are the skill set guys i'm done with what is devops i'll take your question but let me finally wrap this up with a skill set and what we're going to cover in the course so skill set in today's time you need one is systems knowledge operating systems knowledge like linux windows if you're working in windows you need to have great knowledge in windows administration if you're working in linux you need great knowledge in linux administration infrastructure level knowledge okay uh any you know when we talk about infrastructure everything comes network storage so in having a high level knowledge on infrastructure is extremely important okay cloud computing skills are today default okay more than 90 percent of the it companies are using cloud computing some way or the other so you need to have a cloud computing skills because you're going to automate a lot of things over there okay development is dlc knowledge okay this is what i have explained to you but when you work with a developer you'll gain more knowledge build and release automation which is called as continuous integration you need to know that what it is and how you're able to how to do it excuse me automation of operating system level task right installing package services configuration changes right orchestration of the entire process continuous delivery we call it right integrating everything together 
network and security knowledge is important because you're going to automate those things also like firewall rule changes right network some port change stuff like that containerization right uh, mostly docker and kubernetes for complete kubernetes uh, sorry container orchestration these are the skill set in today's time that you need to have if you're entering into devops okay as in for a job i'm saying right when you need to develop on this skill set right how i'll do it like a pro i'm going to show you now how what are the content of our course so first of all we are not going to do a hello world programs right we have a project called v profile it's a java application uh, and this contains multiple services to give you real time challenges okay so you are going to uh, deploy this entire project first manually then automatically on vms on cloud computing environment on containers kubernetes okay so all the automation you will be seeing around this right this is a high level architectural design of it you have nginx tomcat rabbitmq memcache mysql these services so we, i'm going to show you how you can deploy this manually automatically vms cloud containers kubernetes and also delivering regular code changes for this environment like you have in a project in an it industry first we're going to start with very basic this course is for absolute beginners so don't worry you don't need to have any prerequisites you don't need to know this or that okay uh, just need to have a very good passion and you need to uh, schedule some time for practice okay i'm going to start from a very basics of linux i'll show you server management in linux we'll be using vagrant to automate virtual machines we'll be seeing basics of networking and we'll de deploy the entire view profile project on vms this is going to be your ground zero okay <clears throat> prerequisite if you're a system admin it's not a big deal for you but if you are not then you need to uh, make sure you practice this a lot okay your uh, base should be very strong okay foundation should be very strong so step one i'm going to cover the foundations all right there's no devops here okay except we are using vagrant for automation okay this is very very basic concepts right plus you will see the project also not just basics so many things in the linux you'll be seeing okay so it'll be use will be then then learning bash scripting guys and you will be uh delivering you know, deploying the entire product automatically on your vms by using vagrant and some bash scripts okay all the services the entire project will be deploying this is again the ground zero then we'll be stepping it into cloud computing okay sorry uh, not just ground zero we'll be learning bash scripting also over here okay okay step two is going to be cloud computing we're going to focus on aws sysops if you don't know what is sysops just google that right you'll find out different services that we use in sysops so we're going to use im service ec2 ebs elb s3 cloudwatch rds auto scaling route 53 once we learn these services in part one of aws we'll be deploying our v profile project on aws cloud okay so you'll be seeing how you're going to refactor or re-architecture your product and deploy it on aws cloud all right a production grade and uh this is where uh this this is part one of aws we have part two of aws also okay where we're going to get more in detail right uh and we'll be using some other services like memcache d uh elastic elastic cache amazon mq okay some other services right step three we'll be learning continuous integration so git build tools like maven and we're going to uh, learn uh, in detail on jenkins like a build server uh you know build test deploy jenkins master slave concepts nexus sonar cube jenkins ci pipeline continuous integration pipeline jenkins administration and then we'll be using a reprofile project for the continuous integration over here okay so the course is like this okay you learn concepts and then you implement it in the project okay that's why i say i focus on real time implementation all right so you're going to have a ci cd pipeline for our v profile project okay we'll learn that in detail later okay i need to remove this bonus now okay now this has become the part of the course it used to be a bonus previously 
bash script and python script so bash script we are going to you know we'll see we are going to see basics of bash scripting variables conditions loops and we'll be seeing how to automate day to day system admin tasks by using bash scripts python script we're going to see basics of python programming variables data types conditions loops functions modules and then we'll see how to use python for automating operating system tasks now this was bonus previously because uh, people were scared of doing scripting or programming okay in devops and that's why i used to give this as a bonus you know so don't get scared like that right uh, many people ask me this question uh, before getting into devops that uh, do we really use uh, scripts to doing automation okay or even devops many many devops engineers who are already working also ask me this question right or should i use python or bash for doing automation my first suggestion is avoid it if you can okay avoid it if you can because there are many many better tools to do automation today's time you have ansible then you have uh, after previous to that you had chef then you had puppet previously right and for cloud automation you have terraform cloud formation many many tools you have and they are much easier to do things but you should have some hands on experience on programming okay so if you're asking me do i need to know programming to get into devops well basics of programming you should know and that is the only reason why i'm covering bash scripting and python scripting okay this is so you can become expert in tools like ansible okay we're going to do ansible in very great detail and ansible is an automation tool and it derives so many concepts from programming languages like conditions loops variables json yaml right so uh, in order to become a master in ansible you should have some programming knowledge right so i'm going to introduce ansible to you and ansible is going to be very very hands on uh, there will be no theory over here you will be seeing lots of modules in ansible uh, we'll write, we'll be writing a lot of playbooks based on the real time use cases okay we're going to see a lot of variables roles and in depth concept we'll be also seeing how to use ansible for aws and of course we'll be deploying our v profile project by using ansible okay we'll have actually one or two, sorry three projects which are based on ansible two direct completely ansible project and one project which will be a combination of jenkins ansible together okay so a few ansible projects all right step six aws revisited okay aws part two begin to get into vpc in depth log management and custom metrics we're going to use cloudwatch we're going to see aws cli s3 cli we'll be seeing some devops services also uh, like beanstalk and we'll be also using of rds again and this time we're going to again do a aws deployment of our project but this time it will be different okay we'll be also learning how to do ci cd on complete aws services code commit code build code pipeline right so one more project will be over here actually two projects will be here route 53 routing policies will be seeing uh, in different deployment strategies like blue green deployment eb testing right so getting more advanced in aws over here for devops okay this part is totally focused for devops right so we'll be having a cicd project on aws we'll be using code commit code build code deploy code pipeline service beanstack rds s3 together okay step seven is going to be on containerization we're going to understand what is docker what are containers and we'll be uh, seeing different concepts in docker volume network logs etc and we'll be building uh, docker images for our v profile project okay which is called as containerization docker compose and then we're going to start with kubernetes we'll see how you can set up kubernetes for a production environment we'll be seeing eks service we'll see different kubernetes objects like pods services controllers deployment replication controller auto scaling resource quotas secret config map namespace actually there are many many objects in kubernetes okay we'll be not learning all of them okay uh, because we have limitation being a devops in, in sorry in the course right the time limitation of course but we'll be learning substantial amount of kubernetes you will be able to deploy a production project on kubernetes cluster 
All right, so uh, in that, uh, in containers, uh, so, so we'll be having a containerization project and we'll be having a Kubernetes project, okay? All right, uh, and then you'll be getting some videos also, which I have conducted for the workshop. Just a moment, guys, I'll be back in a minute, okay? In a minute, less than a minute. All right, I'm back. Okay, yeah, uh, along with that, guys, you're going to get some uh, videos also on Terraform, AWS security, cloud formation. Right? Okay. All right, uh, so uh, that is all uh, from my side. Uh, if you have any question, do let me know. Uh, hi, Bran. Hey. Yeah, I wanted to know what is the DevOps uh, roles and responsibilities. Like majorly, and uh, which part? Like, is it in a like, delivery master or something else? I wanted to know the specific roles of the DevOps engineer in our Sure. Uh, see, uh, the main objective uh, being a DevOps should be. Uh, so objective is the DevOps life cycle. You can mute yourself. There's too much background noise. I'll answer the question. Yeah, thank you. So the main objective of you is going to be setting up a DevOps life cycle. But when you're doing that, there'll be many things that you need to automate, like a continuous integration process, okay? Uh, continuous delivery process, writing codes in Ansible, okay? AWS uh, cloud computing or any cloud computing environment setup or automating that. Okay, so this will be a regular roles and responsibility uh, revolving around automation, whatever is involved in the DevOps lifecycle. Okay, and then slowly, slowly integrating everything together. And uh, once you have set up a DevOps lifecycle for a project, then uh, regular changes. Okay, it's not just you set up and the work is done. Uh, there'll be regular changes. Okay, optimization. Right, those things you need to do. So no system admin work. If you're thinking, there's no system admin work. There's no development work. You're not a developer. You're not going to work on the product development. Uh, you're not a software tester. You're not going to run any software. You're not going to write any software test cases. Okay. It's about integrating all the automation tools together. Okay. And if you're working in a bigger organization, guys, then you will be probably working um, maybe on Jenkins or maybe on just a moment. Sorry, so you'd be working probably only on Jenkins or only on Ansible, right? If you're lucky, you'll be able to work on the entire life cycle. Uh, Imran. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is the role in uh, AWS here? I mean, uh, there, um, So AWS is a cloud computing provider. Right, it's the biggest public cloud computing product. That's just an example I'm giving over here, okay? These tools are just example. We'll be using AWS in our course a lot, okay? It provides the infrastructure, right? So instead of you setting up your own data center and you know 
creating your servers and virtual machines you can use the cloud computing environment of amazon okay infrastructure okay. yeah hello yep yeah is coding is necessary and compulsory for devops well uh, you know i answered that question but i'll answer it one more time for you so as i explained over here uh, there right uh, we don't really use bash scripting and python scripting for doing a lot of automation today's time uh, we'll be using tools like ansible or jenkins or terraform or cloud formation but those automation tools are based on the concepts of programming language so yes uh, you should know some programming and for that reason we are covering bash scripting and python scripting Hi, Hi, Imran. Yeah, Imran. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Imran. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just I want to know that uh, you already told about the roles and responsibilities and coding order. Part of the stuff you're going to teach us is already told that. But I want mm -hmm. to ask some one question that you sure. know. Told, uh, listed all the automation tools, or scripting tools, or whatever it is. Uh -huh. So, in the DevOps uh, engineering daily roles and responsibilities, we have to monitor all these tools are based on the uh, monitor. Company Sorry, no, no. why what, will you be monitoring? What? Yes, we have to monitor on, by, by using all these tools are based on one or no, 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 there is no monitoring. Who said monitoring? Yeah, I'm not telling that like monitoring and just we have to use these tools every yes. day. In a... Yeah, okay. uh, that depends, man. Every day or, uh, you okay. know, you do use one tool, you're done with it, you're using another tool. It to it's totally big, depends on where you are currently at the life cycle. Okay. 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 Hi, Imran. Just a moment, guys. I have a delivery guy at the door. I will just fix him and I'll come back. Just give me a minute. Yes. One minute. Yes. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, uh, you, you're asking, right? So, it really depends on where, what exactly, where you are at the life cycle. Uh, you may be allotted uh, user stories, what you're going to do maybe writing an automation from ansible or doing continuous integration or continuous delivery it totally depends on where you are at the life cycle you'll be doing that particular thing it's not something like a system admin do regularly using something you know yeah 
and was the story yeah man i have two questions uh, i'll ask back to back one is we are using day to day activities of development and the testing in environment git we are using day to day but uh, again same in you know, devops also we are using git uh, where it is coming difference for both Am I clear? Uh, my question is. It's not just about Git. That's a version control system. Maybe using something else also. So if you're asking specifically on no. developers, no, no, no. Developers yeah. will be using Git. 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 You are using Git. Git. Write your automation code and pushing it on Git. Yes, yes. Same thing we are doing and creating the pull request and sending to on call. Sorry, what is that? And releasing. Uh, we are creating the pull request with the changes. And sending to on call engineer. On call engineer is releasing that. Right. Then uh, again, yeah, this is the procedure we are following. So, uh, how it is differ from the regular process in DevOps? Now, see what you are asking is really a developer is using Git uh, to create pull request, and why DevOps is using Git. DevOps is using Git whenever there is a code change done by the developer on the Git. Whenever there is a pull request. Right, yeah. the things needs to be tested. So develop DevOps will develop a framework. Whenever there's a pull request, the code will be fetched, uh, delivered to the servers, tested. Okay, all the integration will be done for the pull request. The other part, the that, ops part. That part, that part I know already. But thing is, we are sending manually the pull request to uh, that uh, release master. The release master is checking and verifying and merging the branch. Uh, right, like two production servers. So this right. this work, how it will be done in DevOps? I wanted to know. Is it manual? That's what I'm saying. This, this process like... will be automated in DevOps. This is the continuous. So there is no what you're saying. So there the is no request sending and receiving and testing is not there. Everything is online only. Yes, it will be done automatically. Whenever there is a pull request, everything will be done automatically. This process is called as continuous integration. It's too much background. Yeah, right even uh, even we have that continuous integration process in our project. That right. like whenever some code changes are notifying in Jenkins server, immediately the, some automation jobs are triggering in Bamboo. Those are automatically right. running. We are monitoring right. those uh, Bamboo logs, and if something failure is there, we are verifying that. And if it right. is a script level failure or application level failure, we are fetching and we are debugging and fixing those issues. Day-to-day -day activities, but, but that's how will it be done? You know, yeah. That that's Same what thing. is done in DevOps. That's what the continuous integration part. That's the first part in the DevOps. Fix setting up yeah. continuous integration. If any there is any yeah. failure, it will be reported to the yeah. developers. Developer will make the fix. The process repeats yeah. again. Okay. So there is no human yeah. intervention in this process. No human will click on some button and trigger the job. Okay. 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 DevOps will How will happen all this automatically? So email notification will trigger to the developer and QA or manager. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Nice. Uh, thank that's you. Continuous very integration. Very that's continuous That's just one part of the story. Right. Then you have yeah. the de de delivery part also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It, there was so much background noise at your end, so it was very difficult for me to understand. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, if you are already a DevOps, uh, I recommend you check this video. I sent you the link. Well, that's me, by the way. Um, uh, I have released a project videos in our portal. Uh, Twenty DevOps project. If you're already DevOps, if you know these tools, uh, you check check this video. It will you will understand that what kind of projects that I have in the portal. You can subscribe for it. Do the twenty projects to really master. You know, great mastery in DevOps. Okay, lots of hands-on experience you will gain. Right, but if you're a total newbie, don't worry. Do the course first and then go for it. Yeah, where we can get the source code of that project? Uh, uh, source code exactly. of the project. When you subscribe for it, you will get the link. Okay, it is in the oh. videos itself. I am going to show you. Yeah.
Right. Uh, once you are in, uh, you will be also included in the Google Classroom. This for every batch, there is a different Google Classroom, and uh, you know I'm going to send you stuff from here. If you have any questions or getting facing any errors, you can post it, and I'm going to show you how you can fix that. Okay. So you'll not be left alone. Hey, thank you very much for watching the video. You are awesome. Join me for more awesomeness. If you like the video, press the like button, subscribe for more latest update like this and hit the bell icon so you get constant updates.